you have a message for the audience here, you have, uh, you know, a thousand plus air and space professionals and the greatest uh, air and space force on the planet. So what do you want to tell them? I we we got to make Starfleet happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So Elon Musk recently did an interview with the Air Force Association. He had some really interesting points made both around intellectual property and also around the culture of innovation and how Tesla and SpaceX continue to ensure that they are innovating and leading their fields. So what I'll do is I'll play through some of these snippets and add some commentary where I think I can provide some value, a little bit more insight or context for you guys. Without further ado, let's dive in. Intellectual property. Obviously, uh, uh, Tesla, SpaceX, SolarCity mm -hmm. have um, amazing uh, capabilities that they're bringing to the, uh, to the public and to the government uh, every day. How do you protect your intellectual property in a world where it seems like uh, the cloud and servers and things are constantly under attack from people wishing to free you of their, your intellectual property? This is going to be quite funny. Those of you who are quite familiar with Tesla will understand why. For everyone else, well, you're in for an interesting surprise. Yeah, well, actually, at Tesla, we just uh, open sourced our patents uh, some years ago. So anyone can use our patents. Um, so we really have not been tried to protect intellectual property uh, in that sense. Uh, we've, we've tried to actually smooth the path. Because um, mm -hmm. the, the overarching goal of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable energy. And so if we um, created a patent portfolio that discouraged other companies from making electric cars, that would be inconsistent with our mission. Amazingly, very few people seem to be aware of this fact, even though it was about six years ago that Tesla open sourced their patents. And yes, some of them have been used, especially within China. There's a lot of Chinese companies that have sort of taken uh, bits and pieces here and there and applied them into their own designs, which is fantastic. Outside of that, though, been very, very disappointing uptake. Now, I also want to point something out that to most people is already extremely obvious, but some people amazingly miss this. How much does it say about Elon Musk as a man, as a person, his values, his motivation, what's driving him and his actions, that he is willing to forgo tens, if not hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue for Tesla, the company he is CEO of, in favor of helping to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. This is just the most profound insight into who this guy is and what drives him. To the tiny, weird number of people out there that are somehow under the impression that Elon Musk is like a dishonest person or is motivated by the wrong things, just rewind and watch that again until you get it. And if you're still not getting it after that, I honestly would advise that you see a psychologist and try to understand what it is that is poisoning your worldview and completely clouding your judgment of people's characters in a, in a negative way because something is completely miscalibrated and you're going to have a pretty rough life if this one misunderstanding is just a proxy for your view of people's character in general. Oh boy, your radar's a little bit off. It's worth trying to, to resolve that or life's going to be pretty tough. So we open sourced all the patents okay. uh, in order to help the other anyone else who wants to make an electric car. So I guess that's the opposite of protecting the IP. Um, now, now the, the real way I think you, you actually achieve intellectual property protection is by innovating fast enough. Just imagine what it feels like to be the CEO of a company competing with Tesla or SpaceX, to hear their CEO so confidently with such gall say that they open source all of their intellectual property because their culture of innovation ensures that they will continue to pull ahead further and further and further on all technological fronts. Oh boy. If your rate of innovation is high, then you don't need to worry about protecting the IP um, because other companies will be copying something that you did years ago. You guys get it right. These aren't words, there's actions behind them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine, you know. Um, just make sure you're your rate of innovation is fast. Um, speed is really, speed of innovation is, is, what, is what matters. Um, and I do, I do say this to my teams like uh, uh, quite a lot, that innovation per unit time, as I go, innovation per year, if you want to say it, like, is, is what matters, not innovation absent time. Because if you wanted to make, say, 100% um, improvement in something, and that took 100 years or one year, that's radically different. So um, it's like, what, what is your rate of innovation? 
that, that, that matters. And is the rate of innovation, um, is that accelerating or decelerating? Um, and a, a weird thing happens when companies get big is that most companies um, or organizations, the bigger they get, they tend to get less innovative. Um, not just less innovative on a per person basis, but less innovative in the absolute. Um, and I think this is probably because the incentive structure is not, uh, is not there for innovation. Um, it, it, it's not enough to use words to encourage innovation. The incentive structure must be aligned with that. That's fundamental. It may just be me hallucinating, but when I've heard Elon Musk use the word fundamental in the past, it very often seems to have the connotation that, yes, it's fundamental, but it's also extremely obvious, yet nobody does it. Why are you not doing it, you idiots? I mean, again, this is my hallucination, but just in the future, pay attention. When you hear that word fundamental, reflect on that. Look for some examples. Is this really obvious, and yet no one's doing it? And then why aren't they? So, well, first of all, when we interview people, we, we do ask for some evidence of, of exceptional ability, which in most cases in, includes uh, innovation. Uh, this is not to say that everyone needs to be innovative, it's, but we certainly need those that are doing advanced engineering to be innovative. Um, and ideally, everyone is at least some, to some degree innov innovative. Uh, so at the interview point, we select for, for people who, who want to create new technology. The incentive structure is set up that, such that uh, innovation is rewarded. Um, making mistakes uh, along the way does not come with a big penalty. Um, and, but, but, but failure to try to innovate mm. at all comes with a big penalty. You'll be fired. Okay. If that doesn't give you an insight into the innovation cultures at both SpaceX and Tesla, I'm not sure what will. But let's think about this just a little bit deeper. If Tesla and SpaceX are already hiring for innovation, especially in terms of their engineers, and they're firing for lack of innovation, they're going to have this cyclical effect. It's like a feedback loop. They hire innovators. They weed out the people that don't innovate. Those people end up working at other companies that don't innovate either <laughs> and get nowhere. I won't name any names. And it, it repeats. The quality of engineering innovation and innovation in general at Tesla and SpaceX continues to snowball and improve because they're weeding out people that don't innovate. Ruthlessly, you're fired. Don't innovate, you don't work here anymore. So this is really important to understand. This culture is going to ensure both companies like they do now. It's just, I mean, if you look at a recent survey, SpaceX and Tesla were named the number one and number two company that graduating engineers most wanted to work for. I'll put a link to the survey in the notes for this video. That just says everything, right? Yeah. All right. The carrot and stick. If, yes. That's the stick. If you don't even try, um, or, or somebody doesn't even try to innovate, or their innovation um, aspirations are, are, very, are, are not, not, not very good, then, yeah, they will no longer be at the company. So in radical innovation, obviously, the workforce is a really key component of that. I mean, as I mean, during your PayPal days, you were actually doing coding, mm -hmm. right? But in SpaceX and Tesla, they are so large that Elon can't do everything. That's what right, sort right. of things do you think about in terms of motivating a workforce like um, uh, like we have in the Department of the Air Force that will help them become more radically innovative? What sort of things do you look for in people or in processes that make the workforce better? Sure, well, I think the massive thing that can be done is to make sure your incentive structure is such that uh, innovation is rewarded and lack of innovation is punished. So you have gotta be a carrot and a stick. So uh, if somebody is innovating um, and doing, ma making good, good progress, then they should be promoted sooner. Um, and if somebody is completely failing to innovate, um, not, not every role requires innovation, but uh, if they're in a role where innovation is, should be happening and it's not happening, then they should either not be promoted or exited. And let me tell you, you'll get, promote, you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get innovation real fast. Okay, <laughs> the stick. Yeah, it's like, how much do you want? Yeah. 
So does that, does that carrot and stick approach help, uh, do you think, people be more risk averse or less risk averse? Well, for when, you, when, when trying different things, you, you, you've got to have some acceptance of failure, uh, as you were alluding to earlier. Failure must be an option. If failure is not an option, it's going to result in extremely conservative choices, and you, you, may, not, you may get something even worse than lack of innovation. Things may go backwards. Um, so um, if what you really want is uh, risk, risk to, 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 you, want, you want reward and punishment to be, to be proportionate to the actions that you seek. So if uh, if, if what you're seeking is innovation, then you should reward success and innovation, um, and only th th there should be minor consequences for lack of minor consequences for for trying and failing. Sh th there should be minor um, with significant rewards for trying and succeeding, m minor consequences for trying and not succeeding, um, and big. And, and, and major negative consequences for not trying. Okay. So if, if you have that incentive structure, you will get innovation like you can't believe. Okay. Is it any wonder why both Tesla and SpaceX are completely dominating, you no, know, embarrassing their supposed competition in their respective fields? Now, I'm going to tie it all together by just finishing with some Elon Musk comments on reusable rockets. This is the ultimate example of innovation at one of his companies. I'll let him take over from here. I mean, I do think it's, it's absolutely fundamental to achieve full reusability in access to space. This is, this is the, the holy grail of space. Um, at the point at which you have full reusability for orbital rockets, then you have uh, a, a profound advantage over anyone else. It's profound. Um, it would be like if um, in the Air Force, if, if you if you had planes that could be used once, and, or, or if you had, if you had, if you had multi-use planes that could be flown over and over again, like normal, um, and all your adversaries had single-use planes, that would be no contest. It's the same thing in space. Okay. Yeah, this is extremely fundamental. There's that word again, fundamental. So the, 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 the cost of, of propellant is typically on the order of 1% of the cost of the, of, of the vehicle or less. So um, if you have a vehicle that is, say, I don't know, um, blocks kerosene, like Falcon 9 or something like that, um, you know, it's, it's the, 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 the oxygen and the fuel are, yeah, maybe half a million dollars or something like that. Uh, but then depending upon the mission, the mission price can be anywhere from like 60 to 100 million dollars. So, um, now Falcon 9 is a partially reusable vehicle, but not fully. Um, the vehicle we're working on right now, uh, which is quite difficult, is a Starship. And uh, yeah, th th that has the potential for full reusability. Now, if you somehow managed to miss that, let me just reiterate the actual fuel costs for a rocket around half a million dollars or so to get a payload to orbit. The actual launch cost that SpaceX are currently charging is 50, 60 plus million dollars. A fully reusable rocket, the vast majority of the cost is going to be the fuel. Oh man, the numbers here are insane guys, like let it sink in. And the thing is, SpaceX has a clear run at launches. Nobody can compete with them until they can master fully reusable or at least reusable rockets. They don't even have to be fully reusable at this stage. No one has managed to pull that off yet. If you'd like a gauge of how many years ahead SpaceX are on the innovation front in space technology, just a bit of a proxy for the companies in general that Elon Musk is sort of involved with. Wait until somebody else can land, just land, reland an orbital class booster rocket for the first time. That will give you a gauge of how far ahead SpaceX are. They've been doing this for years. And now a few closing words from Elon Musk discussing what competitors will need to do to compete with their Starship launch system, which ultimately will help us to colonize Mars. So essentially, unless you have a launch system that is somewhere in the megaton per year range mm -hmm. to orbit, it's not, it's not relevant. Okay. 
Translation, if you want to compete with SpaceX in the future, you will need to innovate your face off. I hope this video has given you guys a little bit of additional context around the cultures of innovation in SpaceX and Tesla, and also some understanding on why Tesla happily open sourced their patents six years ago without any concern for people stealing their stuff or putting them out of business or getting their profits. No, no, no. First of all, SpaceX and Tesla are innovating at a rate faster than just about any other company on Earth, and they've also got the best engineers, the best innovators, they've got the best people, so good luck catching up. SpaceX is a prime example of this, it's much more tangible because a lot of people will confuse Tesla as just another car company and misunderstand the fact that they've created something that nobody else has. In terms of the technology, it's, it's a smartphone on wheels, the powertrain battery technology is just light years ahead of everybody. But in SpaceX is a much clearer example because literally nobody else is relanding orbital class booster rockets. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. BS. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. Either way, the best kind of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.